هيل تبصخ خروز خقاوي بري خيل داث بشمت ماريا After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the land of Judea and there he remained with them and baptized. John the Baptist also was baptizing at Anon near Salim because there was much water there and people came and were baptized. For John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between John's disciples and a Jew over purifying and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, here he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered them saying, No one can receive anything except what is given him from above. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now full. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth, and of the earth he speaks. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what has, he has seen and heard, and yet no one receives his testimony. He who receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for it is not by measure that he gives the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God rests upon him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of our faith, and for the gift of you being our Lord and our God. We ask you, Lord, as we sit here in this church on this Sunday, that we would be filled with all the graces and all the gifts that we need to be faithful disciples, to be joyful disciples, uh, to be on fire for you. We ask this and we prepare ourselves to receive you in the most holy Eucharist. Help our minds and our hearts to be open to you and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We ask this through St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So tomorrow is Valentine's Day, right? But tomorrow's for women. Today is Valentine's Day for men, right? Because it's the Super Bowl and we know men love nothing more than football. So happy Valentine's Day to all the guys out there. Today's your day. And it's good uh, that we're here. So I just, again, always want to thank you for your faith and thank you for coming to church. Today, uh, let's keep in mind and a very important truth that we heard in our gospel. That God is real. God is true. And I think that this very point is something that we need to focus on today because we heard it from John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the cousin of Jesus and John the Baptist was sent before Jesus came 
to preach and to teach and to call the people to repent, to change their lives. And he's telling his disciples that God is real, that God is true. And my brothers and sisters, this is a point that we must keep in mind because a lot of people do not believe in God. And I'm not just talking about people who are out in the world or even atheists. But many of us, maybe some of us who even come to church, don't even actually believe in God. Don't even actually believe that He's real. Especially for some of you who might be coming with your parents, right? You come with your parents, they make you come to church, and maybe as a young person, you start to question and you start to doubt and to think, well, is this even real? And in our world, we see that everywhere. You can talk to a bunch of people. Talk to people you work with. People might not believe in God, but they believe in a higher power. Or they believe in an energy, right? We know those energy people. <laughs> and I just had an experience with that last weekend. I was out to eat. And if you've ever hung out with me, you know I'm a very extra person. But I also love just to be genuinely nice to people. So I make a point of that, especially when I'm out in public, to be genuinely nice to people. And I think you guys probably have experienced that, right? You go to the grocery store, you go out to eat, you might thank the person who's working in the store, thank your server, and it's like the greatest thing they've ever heard. Because people are not nice today. So I was out to eat, and this waitress comes to our table, she's helping us, she's serving us, and towards the end, of our meal, she turns to us and she says, I just really love your guys' energy. I really love your energy. And when the bill came around, we paid the bill, and on the bill I wrote, the energy that you loved is because of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we can call God a million names. We can call God an energy we can call God a higher power. We can call him an it, right? But God has a name, and his name is Jesus Christ. Our God has a name, and that is who he is. God is real. God is true. And as I was preparing this week for this homily, and praying about this very point, about God being real, I was looking at some of different philosophers and different theologians. For example, St. Thomas Aquinas. He's one of the greatest philosophers. He has something called the five proofs of the existence of God. St. Bonaventure is another philosopher who, who literally logically proves the existence of God. And I thought, maybe I can bring some of these up in my homily. And I was thinking about other philosophers and theologians. But as I was preparing for this... I was sitting in adoration and I just felt the Lord asking me something very clear. And I start to question myself, well, why do I believe that God is real? Why do I believe that God is true, personally for me? Because we can go and we can read, right, a bunch of things that are online and a bunch of different philosophers which are beautiful and very intellectual and very challenging. But I think the question we need to ask ourselves is, why do I believe that God is real? Why do I come to church every single Sunday and receive the Eucharist? If we don't have a why for what we're doing, then you know that's a very dangerous thing. Because especially when suffering or a cross comes around, if we don't have a why, then we will fall. We will give up very easily. So we can know a lot about Jesus, and we can love Jesus, but if we don't know why we love him, if we don't know why we should know about him, then everything else is going to crumble. So for me, why do I believe in God? Why do I believe that he is real? It comes down to really just one thing. I really believe that all of us, every single one of us in this church, have a deep desire to be loved and to love. We all have that, every single one of us. We all want to be loved, and we also want to give that love. 
That's why we're created. We were created for love and to love. Now, what I've experienced in my life is that God, Jesus Christ, is the only person who can fulfill that love. Jesus is the only person who can bring love into my life. Real love. And that doesn't discredit the people around us, but I want to tell a very real story, an example of how that's happened for me. When I was praying about this, the image that came to mind and the memory came to mind when I was in seminary. And seminary is a very beautiful place. We lived in Detroit with about a hundred other guys who were also becoming priests. And throughout the day, we're going to class, we're praying, uh, we're doing different activities. And I just remember one day very specifically when I was there, it was a very long day. Some of us have those days, right? We have a very long day, we're tired, we're kind of exhausted. And I remember being very tired and very exhausted that day after class, but I felt something on my heart. Like I felt like an emptiness, I felt like an ache in my heart. And I said to myself, I remember I was sitting in class and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go hang out with some of my friends after this. And I know that, like, I'll be better after that. So I did that. I left class, it was late, and I went into one of the guys' rooms. Everyone was in there and hanging out. And I went in and I hung out with the guys for maybe an hour. And as I walked out of the room, I realized that that ache and that emptiness was still there for some reason. It was like, even though I hung out with those guys and even though I had a great time and even though I had fun, that whatever I was going through wasn't taken away. Whatever I was missing wasn't filled. So in the seminary, there's different chapels that you can go in and pray. So before I went to my room, I said, let me just go to the chapel. Let me just go be with the Lord right now. I went into the chapel. I went and sat before the Eucharist. And I knelt down. And I promise you, the minute that I knelt down, there was this overflowing rush of peace. Literally, from the top of my head to the rest of my body, I felt like this peace just came upon me. And I remember kneeling there, remembering and thinking that what I was looking for, God just gave it to me. And that is why I believe that God is real, that God is true. Because every time I go to the Adoration Chapel, it might not be as dramatic as that, but every time I sit in front of the Eucharist, something like that happens. And some of you know that experience. You've gone to the chapel, you've come into church, and you're just like, everything just weighs away. Everything goes away. That is God. That is how real He is. That is how true He is. And so the challenge that I want to give us, especially today, right? Probably going to hang out with a bunch of people, probably going to go to different houses. I want to challenge you to talk about why you believe in God. Why do you believe in Him? And it's not just about what God has done for you. But why do you believe in Him? Why do you actually think God is real? And if you don't have an answer for that question, you are in a very dangerous spot. If you don't know why you believe in God, then I want to challenge you this week to figure it out. Figure out why you believe. Why you think He's real. And that's going to come by praying. That's going to come by going to Him. And I just want to end with this. There's a saint... And he says, how do we expect people out in the world to believe in God? When our faith tells us, love your enemies, do good to those who hurt you, but we as Christians can't even love our own brother or sister. Think about that. How do we expect people in the world to believe that God is real? When God says to love your enemy, but we can't even love our own brother or sister. Every single one of us in this church is a walking Bible, is a walking church, 
is a walking example of Jesus Christ. Every single one of us. And so the reason that there are so many people that don't believe in God, it's not because of the world. My brothers and sisters, it's because of us. We lack courage. We lack strength, not just to preach about God, but to be an example of Him, to live for Him, and to show people that God is worth living for because He is real and His name is Jesus. Today, our challenge is to do that. No matter how many chicken wings you're deep today, right? I don't care how many food comas you're in today. Talk about Jesus. Tell people why you believe in Him. And you ask them too, why do you believe in God? Let's challenge each other today so that this world isn't just a better place, but it's a place of people who are on fire for God and truly believe in His existence. Amen. Amen.